In Connecticut, tens of thousands of residents have failed to comply with a new law that requires gun owners to register all military-style rifles with the state. In response to the Sandy Hook school shooting that resulted in 26 fatalities, Connecticut passed one of the strongest gun control measures in the nation. It's estimated that only 15 percent of gun owners have applied for assault weapons certificates, meaning the remainder could very soon become Class D felons. Earlier, I spoke with Brian Crosswhite, the founder of SecondAmendment.org, and first asked him why these gun owners are not complying with the new law. Well, I think the issue in Connecticut is that the gun laws that are currently have been passed since January of are very confusing. Uh, there's two different ways. People are looking at it as a way of civil disobedience uh, because these laws are unconstitutional. And second of all, there's people who just don't understand the law, uh, especially with pertaining to 22 round um, rifles. So there's probably estimated about 50,000 people who are not complying with the laws. Do you think this is civil disobedience? Um, well, I believe that you know, when you look at what's going on, there's been some surveys done by the uh, CCDL in Connecticut, and they're saying that people are coming out saying it's civil disobedience because this is a, a law that doesn't uh, go against the crimes that are going on in Connecticut. It's going against the law-abiding citizens who, are, who have guns. And you said that this is unconstitutional, though some of the members of the state legislature said it's not. Do you think this is going to be repealed, go to possibly the Supreme Court? Not sure yet on that. Uh, that's something that's being debated right now in Connecticut. And one of the senators on the Public Safety Committee, he said that if you pass laws that people have no respect for and they don't follow them, then you have a real problem. How do you think the state should move forward in bringing these tens of thousands of people back in compliance with the laws? Well, I think they're going to have a hard time coming in, uh, putting this back in compliance, especially when precedence is already set here in Capitol Hill with our president, who is changing the laws, which he's breaking the, the, national, the federal laws every day with what the, the stance that he's taking on different legislations, pr primarily his health care uh, plan. So people look at that and say, well, why should we abide by these laws if the president is breaking these laws? Well, there's also the issue of now that the deadline has passed to register their arms, people have said that they're scared to come forward because they could be slapped with criminal charges. Right. So do you think the state should take uh, any types of, of steps, maybe passing right. further legislation or? No, I think what's going to happen, the governor knows very well that this is not going to work. It's not going to make everyone compliant. And there is 20,000 laws currently on the books in the United States on gun laws. And currently, crime is still, criminals who are, excuse me, criminals who still uh, use guns, it's not affecting them at all. It's only affecting the, the, the hunters and the sportsmen. But there are some people who think that these types of stricter gun laws actually make residents more safe. Well, that's that's an opinion. Well, this is what uh, one of the debaters on our gun show had said about that. Having a gun in the home, you're 22 times more likely to use it on yourself or someone you know or love, uh, suicide, accidental shooting, domestic abuse, um, homicide, rather than to repel an invader. That's the, that's the data. So uh, low gun ownership rates, having fewer guns in the home, um, and strong gun laws actually do end up protecting uh, citizens of states with strong laws. Given these uh, statistics that she just uh, cited, do you think that stricter gun laws make us safe? Actually, I don't think it does. I think the statistics you state is true, but that's where we're coming in as organizations who are pro-Second Amendment to educate people on gun safety within the home. And that's one of our goals, is to be able to provide that type of educational process. But uh, the statistics that wasn't spoken about was that 40, 40 times more a year, or 40 times more a year, is people are using guns in self-defense. And that's not ever talked about. And so that's a critical thing, especially when, when 1.5 million times a year guns are being used. And with your organization, SecondAmendment.org, you've created your own type of registry that people all over the country are signing up on. Right. Can you tell us what your mission is? Yeah, so our mission overall for 2AO is to bring consumers and business owners who believe in the Second Amendment together. So we're registering over 10,000 businesses in the last 30 days throughout the United States who support the Second Amendment. 
And how are you going to move forward with uh, your goals? Our goals is, is we have a lot of movement here on our organization that we're trying to understand where we want to take it as an organization since we're a fairly new organization. But our ultimate goal is to bring together all of these consumers and businesses alike and to be able to support them and have a voice here in Capitol Hill. Great. Well, thank you very much. This is Brian Crosswhite, the founder of SecondAmendment.org. Thank you, Perry.